So in this section, we're going to take a look at the capability of spinning up a virtual machine on GCP that has machine learning libraries and Jupyter Lab installed on it. Now this takes a little bit of time, so I actually already spun one up, and you're going to want to, of course, read, as is typical, uh, the uh, information about it. And in the compute area, we're covering these sections right here, basically. So this is under GCP, under the AI platform. And you can see I've already started an instance here. So once an instance is started, you select the programming language. In this case, I selected Python. And notice we get some of the common libraries installed, NumPy, SciPy, Scikit-Learn. Uh, and we could have GPUs as well. So then once we have this, we're going to work with this, not with an SSH window, but with Jupyter. So if you click this link, which I already did. Then you have Jupyter Lab, and you can see inside of here we have some tutorials. And if we wanted to look, for example, at uh, working with um, some of the services like BigQuery, we could just click in here, and we could see um, some example notebooks. And so here we have an IPython notebook getting started with BigQuery. Kind of talks about um, working with BigQuery. You can see this is set up for Python 3, and um, if typical Jupyter notebook where you have markdown uh, or information and then you have code cells that can execute and uh, then you can run different languages. This is using BigQuery syntax with the magic indicator here, the percent sign, percent sign. Um, and then you can import export so you can save notebooks, you can upload notebooks inside of here. You can think of this, I call it like a smart terminal, and again, I see this being used really a lot for research. So why would you use this rather than a raw VM? Well, you can get up and running a little bit quicker because you have these pre-configured um, instances. So these are basically Google Compute Engine instances that have libraries already installed. And I hear, you know, oftentimes people are working with R, for example, or they're working with the Python, uh, you know, languages and libraries. Notice also, for some of the instances, you can have GPUs, which is uh, commonly used for machine learning with deep learning, such as TensorFlow. So you can see we have TensorFlow 1. Another reason to use this service rather than a raw VM is, for example, if you are working with TensorFlow, which as of this recording has released into version 2, and if you wanted to try it out without installing it, basically. And then we have PyTorch, we have XGBoost, and then, um, you know, just the pure NVIDIA GPU installation. So these are a premium type of compute, so they do cost a little bit more. So if we were to spin up one of these, for example, you can see here's the base and here's the cost, then a raw um, virtual machine. But the, again, the reason for this is the time versus money continuum that is so common in cloud services. How much is your time worth? If you are spinning up a VM instance, it's already with all the libraries and drivers pre-installed, you can get working faster. You can further customize this inside of here, and it looks kind of like the Google Compute Engine customization. It's simpler, basically. You set the regions and zones, you set the framework, and this is where you select the different libraries that Google has set up. You set the machine type, and again, you can set some pretty beefy machines here similar as again as we saw in the VMs, high CPU, high memory, so depending on what type of research problem you're working on computationally. You have uh, GPU options and uh, of course you can have different types of GPUs and you have um, the option for SSD for workloads that would uh, benefit from that. So this is a pretty new service as of this recording time um, but it's something I've been using already with some of my research groups. So I wanted to include it in the materials in this course.